Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about the worst products I tried this year. Now, a couple of things you need to know. First of all, there will be no eye products in here. There will be no lip products in here because I'm doing a separate lip video. I've already done a ranking of all of the palettes that I purchased in 2023. I'll link it for you here, description box down below. And one disclaimer, and you might think the disclaimer is if it works for you, great, it didn't work for me. That's not the disclaimer. Although, yes, let's say that as well. My goal this year was to only buy things that I thought would be amazing. Things that I had done a little bit of research on that I'd taken time to read through and make sure that the claims that the product was making were gonna be fitting my needs, that I was gonna buy colors and formulas that were reaching the needs of a nearly 50 year old. I'll be 49 next month and you know, I, I don't have time to play with bad makeup. I don't want to play with bad makeup. I want it all to be good. So I didn't go out there purchasing things with the intention of going, this sounds terrible, let's see how it works. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so uh, there are four products that are on this list that I don't have anymore. <laughs> okay, first one, I wanted to love this one so much because I need a corrector for my under eye circles. And this is the one from Rare. This is the Positive Light Under Eye Brightener. I got it in the lightest shade. And for me, it wasn't the product, it was the applicator. Oh my goodness, it had this little metal applicator and it needed a doe foot. My kingdom for a doe foot, because I felt like, although the product was okay, was it the most pigmented? No. Did it do the most color correcting or under eye brightening? No. Could you make it work? Yeah. Would you still look like you had dark circles? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so formula was, for someone who had minimal dark circles or who had maybe had a couple of sleepless nights, not for somebody with chronic dark under eye circles, first of all. Second of all, but it, for me, the clincher, the worst part of it was that little metal wand for the applicator because there was no product that you could pick up on there. I was forever dipping it in, trying to get it on, dipping it back in, and it was supposed to be cooling. I don't care about cooling. I want you to apply. That was not for me. So this next one is a mascara that I just didn't like, I didn't like it. And I, I felt like, and maybe the reason I didn't like it is because I like what I felt like it was trying to duplicate. It's the Milani um, Liquid Lash Extensions, uh, the highly rated lash extensions, the ones that comes in that um, green tube with the gold cap. Okay, it really wants to be the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. It, it does with its whole, whole heart, but it's just not. The problem that I had with that, I had smudging. I had flaking, and then on top of that, um, I lost all of my curl. And did it tube? No, the idea of a tubing mascara is with a little bit of warm water, all of the product just slides right off, and it looks like maybe lashes at the bottom of the sink or little spider legs. It looks like, you know, individual black strips of product. This did not come off in tubes in my experience and it kind of left a little bit of a smudgy residue which I had to go in and it didn't really feel like a true tubing mascara. It wants to be, but it's not quite there yet and I don't feel that for the 12 or $13 price that I paid for it that it was worth it at all. It was a bad drugstore mascara. Here's something that I got during the 21 days of beauty and I completely forgot about it. <laughs> And I didn't realize until I went through and I was checking my list because I make a list of all the products that I tried every year and I'm already at like uh, 377 of products that I tried this year. Not repurchases, but things that came in new to my collection and if I don't keep a list, I lose track because I already got rid of this. I, did, I didn't like it. And it's not even a new product. It's a product that I kind of probably came and went and I was like, eh, whatever. I didn't even, it didn't really like click in my brain when it was being released. But then I saw somebody who I really admire using it and I was like, ooh, that sounds like a great product. I wanna try it. And then it was on sale during the 21 Days of Beauty. And that's where I should have been like, mm, wait a minute. Okay, so here it is. It's the Tarte Man Eater Blush and Glow. So it's a liquid blush that comes in a, it looks like a giant like container of shape tape, one of those like tubes and the doe foot is not even a doe foot, it's like a buck foot, it's like a giant wand at the end and you can draw it on. And the problem I had with it, did it look pretty on the skin? Yes, but every time I put it down, and it, I think it might've been the delivery method. 
I feel like if it comes with a doe foot applicator, that's how they're expecting you to apply it. And so I kept swiping it on the skin and blending it out, but it was so emollient and it might have been the velvet on the doe foot that was disturbing whatever foundation I had down first. I was always putting this on an unset face so it wasn't going over powder, but I had problems with it getting rid of any, if I had any concealer close to this area, any foundation, it just kind of ate through everything because it was really emollient. I did end up like, you know, wiping some off the wand on the back of my hand and using a brush to apply. And then I still had problems with the product on the brush. And as I was very gently tapping it in, still eating through product. I tried a sponge. I tried my fingers. Like I really just couldn't get it to work. Um, and the hard part is it's a really pretty product. And I, I don't know, maybe I'm using too much pressure in application. The color was pretty, I got the color coral. I thought the color was pretty. I liked the way it made my skin look, but I had problems with application where I didn't feel like it was ruining my entire face of makeup. So that was a no for me. The other thing that I picked up, and this is the last one that I don't actually have with me to show you, is from Juvia's Place. This is the Nubian Glow Liquid Highlight. This was something that, when they debuted it this summer, it was late spring, early summer, it looked like everything I wanted. It was a glowy, really um, kind of glass skin looking, but it had like pieces of reflective shimmer in there. So there was shimmer in the product, but then the product itself was also very glowy and glass skin like, and it had the same problem the Tarte one did. It kind of ate through everything. And then the amount of shimmer on here was just a little too much for someone like me who has texture right in through here. It, it was not what I needed. Uh, it, it, it was the one highlight that just made me go like, oh, I wanted to love it and it looked so good in pictures and it looked so good in swatches. And then in like, even when I swatched it in store, it looked beautiful, but the reality of it is just was not meant for me. Everything else I have right here in my bad bin. All right. So I'm going to start with foundations and this is one that I really wanted to like. This is a three drop weightless serum foundation from Ritual Defeat. This is one of those I tried Ritual Defeat for the first time this year and there are some products that made it into like my best. And this is one, and maybe it's because I was expecting something different. Um, I feel like the, I'm just gonna shake it up. You gotta shake this up. I feel like the, the packaging for this is nice. So you have this little kind of dropper, has a button on the bottom that says press me. So you're supposed to get like three drops and that should be enough for your whole face. So I like the texture of this. I like the serum quality of it. It was a, I can make it work. It was a little light. But for me, the problem with this was the fact that it ended up like finding every single dry patch on my face. Like I didn't think I had any dry patches. And as a serum foundation, I was like, it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be hydrating. And oh my goodness. It was not pretty. It was not pretty. There's a lot of pigment in these drops. So if you get the right shade and you find that this formula works for you, it was just that this made my skin look worse as opposed to better. I'm always looking for foundation to make everything look better. This just made me look older, drier, um, a little bit, yeah, not, not good. I did not like this. This does not work for me. I have the same problem with this one. This is the Estee Lauder Futurist Skin Tint Serum. Again, maybe it's these serum things. I've tried some serum foundations that work well for me. This one I didn't think worked as well because this did the same thing where I don't think that I'm a particularly dry person. This found all of my dry patches. Oh my goodness, so, so bad. Um, I can make this shade work. It's a little bit too light. The next shade is a little bit too dark, so I, I kind of don't know which way to err. I decided to err on the lighter side. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I'll tell you, this gave very little coverage. It's supposed to wear for eight hours. I didn't find that it did. Um, I also found that it found every single dry patch on my skin, and I never really feel like I have any because, like, it's December. I normally am dealing with dryness right now, and I'm not, but when I was trying this in October, oh, Oh my goodness, it was just like all of the badness and all of the like little imperfections. This fell into every single one of those and then it didn't offer enough coverage to be worth it. 
So this next one I know is going to be some people's favorite, maybe even make it onto their best of the year. And I just could not get it to work for me. I feel like I got a really good shade. It just, okay. It's the Smashbox Always On Skin Balancing Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid and Adaptogens. I don't know. I don't know. These three, the reason that they're here like in the bad bin is because they did all did the same thing. They found every single dry patch on my skin. This one is not supposed to settle. This one's a little bit more of a yellow cast to it. It's not supposed to settle into um, fine lines. It's not, so, but this, I found that it did. I found that it accentuated any imperfections. It does have really good coverage, but I had to work so hard to get this to look good. Could I get there? Yes. But do I want to spend almost $50 on a foundation and then have to work my butt off to get it to look good? No. So I want something that's easy. I want, I want you to do the work for me. I just want to blend you. That's all I want. This one settled. This one definitely did not play well in my like forehead lines. Mm -mm. I also found that it settled into the corners. Um, but this has a lot more pigment than the one from Estee Lauder. I feel like the Ritual Defeat and this one are like right up there with pigment pigment. Um, but no, I do like the container. I do like the pump on it. I like everything about it. Will I still wear it? Probably. But I have to be having like a remarkably good skin day. I have to have my skin primed the right way. And I don't always have time for that. Here is something that on paper sounded like exactly what I was looking for. A luminous setting powder from Makeup Forever. This is the Twist and Light, and I have the shade Claire. And I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna admit it, I was pulled in by the packaging. I've seen this packaging before, it pulls me in, and the idea is, is that you have these three separate chambers here with a skin tone, a blue, and a pink powder, and then you twist the packaging the bottom, and the powder falls down into the well, you put your brush in the well, and you, okay, this, is Sparkle City. I don't know what it is. It is so, it's hard to see here, but in natural light, this looks like I put a highlighter on my face and I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It also does not sit well underneath my eyes. It makes my under eyes look drier. Um, and then with the kind of really shimmery mica reflective qualities in this, it looks like highlight. You're highlighting your whole face. This is a hard no for me. I tried a lot of concealers this year, and this is one that I thought was gonna be great. It sounded like the sort of product that I would like, and it's from Make. This is their Skin Mimetic Concealer. All right, I have found how to use this, but this is supposed to mimic the look of skin, and it's supposed to be really good for under the eyes. I did not find it to be at all. This is probably one of the worst concealers I tried this year under my eyes. This did me no favors. This is the lightest shade. Um, I found that it accentuated every single line. There was no way that I could fully get this set. It's very emollient, which is great because I started using it as foundation and I like it as foundation, but I have to keep it like out of the under eye area. If this gets anywhere in this area, it settles into every crinkle, every line. There is no setting this. I don't know, it's very emollient. So if you have dry skin and you're looking for something hydrating, you might like this. I wish they had a larger shade range. I don't think the product is bad. It just didn't fit my needs, but I have, you can see I've been using it. I've been using it though as foundation. And for that, it's lovely. It's lovely all over the face. It gives a really pretty glow but man, this did not work for me under the eyes. This next product is from Beauty Pie. It is one of their color correctors. Mid-year, they came out with these super luminous corrector. This is the redness corrector, but look how green this is. This is so green. Now, I feel like, and it's very pigmented. I feel like this is the right sort of product for somebody who deals with a lot of redness. Um, I haven't seen this, they, they came out with it and then it was like for members only, you couldn't purchase it unless you were a member. But do you see how green it is? Um, and you can even try and kind of blend it out, but it's still gonna leave a green cast. I do like a little bit of color correction and I do need that because I have some redness, but not to this level. The level of pigment in this is just a little bit too much for my needs. This might be better for somebody who deals with rosacea, somebody who is dealing with like a lot of discoloration or redness from acne. 
um, where you really have a lot more, I have some subtle redness around the corners of my nose and other places on my face, but I was kind of getting this bright green for like right here. And I just look like I was putting on green makeup. <laughs> so this I think is a great product. The texture is nice. It's just too pigmented for my needs. Um, but this could be somebody's holy grail. Man, I love Sydney Grace so much, so much, so much. But they came out with cream cheek products this year. And I picked this one up here. This is the shade Dreamy. It is so pretty. I love the color. The color is, I mean, come on, it's so pretty. The problem I have is you give it a little bit of a blend and it's like, where did you go? <laughs> where did you go? And then just in the process of blending, and it could be just this one shade. It could be just this one shade. The other thing I noticed, I got this during the Christmas and July sale. So by the time it arrived, it was early August. We were in the peak heat of summer and between, you know, perspiration and heat and face oils. Maybe I need to try this again in the cooler months to see if I can get it to, you know, build and stay. My face ate through this and it could be the really light shade. Maybe I need a slightly deeper shade, but between being able to blend it away during application and the fact that my skin ate through it, it felt like it was doing a magic act. Like I'm going to disappear in three, two, one. <sighs> gone. <laughs> that's what this felt like. And that's why this ended up in one of the worst products of the year for me. This product seemed like it was going to be perfect for me because this is a highlight for people with texture. That's what it was supposed to be. This is the Danessa Myricks um, Vision Flush. I had the lightest shade. It, I mean, it's so pretty, so pretty, but it does the same thing that the Sydney Grace does that you blend it in and it's like, wait, where where are you and maybe i'm expecting this to be a little bit more i could continue to layer this up but i feel like to get the look of this i have to like you know add a lot and then hardly blend and then in four hours i feel like this is gone this is very emollient it's very hydrating on the fingers it has kind of like a really interesting slightly silicone-y feel to it um but i find that this just like disappears the same way the one from um, Sydney Grace does. I wanted to love this. I feel like it's really pretty when you swipe it on, but once you start to blend it, and maybe if I had Danessa's pro makeup artist skills, I would know exactly how to use this. But as an everyday person, this, I wanted to love this, and this was just not what I needed. We're just down to eye products. Um, and I know this is not in the bad bin because of like mascara gate. No, this is because this is the most difficult mascara I own to remove. <laughs> I love the look of my lashes when I wear this, but every time I wash my eyes at the end of the day, I'm working so hard to break it up with balm cleanser. Um, later with a foaming cleanser, I bring in a muslin cloth and I lose eyelashes. And when you have sad, short, downward pointing lashes like me, you need every single lash. Do not want to lose any of them to a mascara. And this is not even the waterproof. This is just the regular one. So this telescopic lift, man, it did some really great things. I like that we have one side here that's basically bare, no bristles. I can really load product up on my lashes. And then I can use these really nice kind of wide comey teeth to brush everything through. I get a fan fantastic look with this. It's very dramatic, dramatic, but it's just the, man, I have to know I'm gonna lose lashes when I'm washing this off. And maybe I need to figure out how to be a little gentler in removing this, but I have other mascaras that give a really good look like this and I don't lose any lashes. So this for me is just, I have to work too hard and I don't like it for removal. This seemed like it was gonna be the perfect brow product and it's from Dominique Cosmetics. This pencil is interesting. The idea was is that you could lay it sideways like this and give little hair-like strokes. Let me see if I can get it to work. You could get little hair-like strokes or you could lay it on this edge and fill in a wide area like this. So either laying it down like this or turning it on its side. Now, the way that you were gonna be able to get those hair-like strokes right here from this part of it was their inclusion of a, like a little sharpener. The sharpener is right here, and it's, it's kind of like a bunch of little ridges. The idea is you hold it, 
you lay this down at an angle, you run it over the sharpener and it sharpens the tip to always give you these fine little hair like strokes. The problem I had with this, first of all, there's not a lot of product in here. And maybe there is by weight because it's a really wide pencil, great fine, but she broke. And then when I'm getting down to, this is all that's left, like nothing else is coming up, it's clicking and nothing more is coming up, this is it. If I sharpen this, I'm not getting any more brow usage out of this. Um, I felt like the color was good. I felt like the texture of this was good, but the fact that when I went to sharpen it the way that you're supposed to, it snapped off and broke. No, for a 20 something dollar pencil, I cannot have that. Um, and I also felt like I was able to use it like a dozen or more times before it broke. So I used it for probably a good three, four weeks and then it snapped off. And I don't use the same brow pencil every day, but I felt like this worked really well, you know, laying down color sideways or these small hair like strokes. And I felt like the color worked well for me. I liked the texture of it. The only thing I feel like this little teeny tiny spoolie here is rinky dink. The idea of the sharpener was great. The reality was not good. The sharpener also collects a lot of product here. Um, you're sharpening a ton of product away. I think the idea is great. Just the execution of this didn't work for me. And I don't want to pay 20 something for a brow, you know, pencil that is going to break or that I'm only going to get like maybe, you know, a month's worth of use out of and then I'm out of it. You see what I'm saying? This, I feel like idea was great. It just didn't work the way it was supposed to. All I have left for you are eyeliners. Um, this is one that I got at the beginning of the year. It's not one that I purchased myself. It came in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. This is the Wayne Goss Essential Eye Coal. I would not have picked this. I love, I love the color. This one here is Crystal Merlot. It's such a beautiful kind of earthy burgundy shade and I love it. The problem I have with this is it never sets. If you like a coal eyeliner, you would love this, but it never sets. And then I end up getting kind of like a smudgy and my weepy left eye eats through this. This does not have the staying power that I need. After talking about being disappointed in this, I had a lot of people recommending the Chanel eyeliner to me. And this is the Stilo U waterproof. I have the shade um, Prune, which is number 36. It's a really pretty, you know, purple shade. It's kind of like, it's not a purple, it's not a burgundy. I love the color. This I found a little bit difficult to get the sharp that I wanted, that sharp kind of like wing out here. And then if this went anywhere in my waterline, it smudged. The other problem I have is let's say I don't get it in my waterline. I'm using it just above the lash line. Um, because of my leaky left eye, I find that I usually have product kind of like right here where I get to the end of my lashes my left eye starts to water and it eats through this. And then I have kind of like a dime sized shape of color that is, it ends up looking like this, where it's eaten through and then you have color around it, kind of like that burgundy tone around it. And at the $30 price for the Chanel liner, no, 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 no. I bought three of these. I can only find two right now. And these made my heart so sad. I wanted to love these so much. These are the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Glide Eye Pencils. Are they a bad pencil? No. But the minute you tell me that you are like in 40 seconds gonna set down and be budge proof, I wanna see that. That does not happen. So this right here is probably the one that I wanted to love the most. This is the shade Ground Coffee. It That is one swipe right there. It glides, it sharpens. The cap fits on really nicely. This is not drying out. I love the colors are nuanced and beautiful. Like it's, it's everything I want in a liner. It doesn't tug, it glides, 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 glides. If you use it with a really teeny tiny like liner pencil, like liner brush like this, you can really get it to kind of become this really skinny teeny, like this is a fabulous formula for glideability, for no tugging on the gentle eye area. I love that. The colors, mm, beautiful. Lisa has an amazing eye for color that I love. But we'll sit here, we'll talk about a couple of other things, we'll come back to this, does not set down. And when Lisa's video came out, she talked about there being, you know, some play time, you get about 40 seconds and it dries down. You know what? No, I did not find that to be the case. I, w I wish, I wish it did. 
because these colors are incredible. The one that I have still continued to use is this one right here. This one's Renaissance Gold. It's because the color is so good. It's like a dark kind of smoky gold. I love that. Um, and this is one where I'll rim my upper and my lower waterline. I normally don't do that. I loved the, the, the way that these liners look, but it's been like more than a minute now. Look what happens here. That does not set. And so if you're dealing with allergies, with watery eyes, if you, you know, sneeze, I feel this, this does not stay put and it does not dry down. Now, can you tap a powder over it to set it into place? Yes. But when I'm paying the $30 a liner and you say you're going to stay in place, you're going to self set and that you're going to be budge proof. This is not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting perfection at that price. So it's been kind of a journey for me in eyeliners this year. I've been looking for like the perfect eyeliner. I tried this one here from Wet n Wild. This is their breakup proof, waterproof, retractable gel liner. This one is so dry, so dry. It is, okay, you see I started to make a line right here and it was so dry, I had to press really hard. This one does the exact opposite of the Lisa Elders. The Lisa one glides like with no effort at all. This one is dry. It catches, it skips, which is what you don't want on your eye area at all. And it can be a little bit hard. I also don't find that it's waterproof. If my tears can break this up, you know, I don't know, maybe you're running through a little mist outside it, like a little bit of a rain is coming down and it gets on there and it dries. But I find that my perpetually leaky left eye eats through this. This is not a waterproof eyeliner, and even though it is affordable, I wouldn't recommend it. There are better drugstore eyeliners that are close in price to this, sometimes even less, that do better. This one, no. Thank you so much for watching today. I never enter into um, Sephora, Ulta, online shopping of any sort going, which is the worst product I can try. That's, that's never my goal. My goal is only to get stuff that I think is gonna work for me the way I like to wear makeup and the sort of end result that I'm going for. And I, I, I purchased every single one of these products here with that in mind. Like this sounds amazing, exactly what I want. And the reality was that it didn't work for me. Um, so I would love to know, did you have any clunkers this year? Any official, you know, products that ended up in your bad bin? Let me know what they were in the description box down below. Don't forget to check out my ranking of my eyeshadow palettes. Also keep an eye out for best products of the year. Um, those will not include eyeshadow palettes and they will not include lip products. Um, but that should be coming soon. And I'm, I bought so many lip products this year. There's no way I can do a lip ranking we'd be here forever. <laughs> so I'm going to do best and worst lip products of the year. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.